All right, guys, quick update. Um, kind of keep this tub around or a box and as we order things from Amazon for the trailer. We just throw it in there. So when we get to the trailer, we can obviously just drop it all off. So kind of wanted to go over some of these items. Uh, this is not, not included, just a tripod. But did want to go over some of these items, um, kind of show you what we have planned. Uh, this all assumes we don't buy a new trailer. Um, so let me just go through these. So this is a, just a battery backup UPS. Um, I believe this is one that you can, yeah, it's got the auto shutdown software. So I have a Mac Mini um, that I use as a media center for the trailer. Um, and this is just as I'm switching over between inverter and generator, um, the Mini won't crash and burn as the power goes out for 30 seconds or whatever. So that's an easy install. I'll probably just mount it with some screws behind my TV where the Mac Mini is and everything will be glorious. What do we have next? Okay, so a while back I installed a uh, cellular antenna. Just a small little, uh, it's about a six inch tall um, antenna on the top of the, the trailer. Um, I used to have an AT&T hotspot which had a an antenna port on it. Um, I now have T-Mobile hotspot that doesn't, so I have to use this. Uh, what do they call it? It's like a inductive or there's a name for it. But the name does not appear. So basically, what it does is it um, this little pad here attaches to the back of the of the hotspot you try to find where the signal is best where you place that pad and um, long story short it just sort of passively or indirectly um, tries to transfer the antenna signal to the hotspot um, so you just get that as close to the internal antennas as possible and that'll plug right into um, my antenna cable. So that's that. And slide out lubricant. Haha. <laughs> Five dollar. Love you a long time. So this uh, basically the rails and a lot of the gearing and whatnot on the trailer on the slide outs needs to be lubricated so I'll be going through that process. And next, we have slide out rubber seal conditioner. Because even though your slide out is lubricated, lubricated doesn't mean your rubber seal is lubricated. So I um, guess we got to do those too. Um, I'll probably research that a little bit. I've seen some videos on, on the slide out lubricant, but not the, the seal conditioner. But um, I assume it just keeps those rubber seals hydrated um, and prevents them from drying out do that uh, let's see I have a that's a little Venturi um, shower head that everybody gets I'm thinking fantastic but that's the fan um, regardless um, we have one of those uh, it does consume more gallons per hour uh, than this shower head so um, pick this up pretty cheap. It's a Niagara. I think the model number is on here. When I install it, I'll get all the information. But um, essentially, this had a lower gallon per hour rating. Um, and the reviews on it on Amazon um, actually were pretty positive. So, in the event we do a lot of boondocking, um, I wanted to really have as as low gallon per hour as possible on all my on all my faucets including the shower there's like a gum wrapper or something down there all right what's this aha uh -huh. so model number EMS HW 30 C 
what is this? This is a Progressive Industries um, electrical management system. It is a surge protector. Um, low wattage, I'm sorry, low voltage, high voltage protector. So um, this is an inline model. I've already put a transfer switch into the trailer, um, which allows me to power on the inverter and use that as my primary. When I shut off the inverter, it will go to my secondary. The reason I do it that way, there was a positive, there was a reason why I did it that way. Um, I'll have to explain that when I install this. I have to think about it again, but but I basically wanted to be able to power on my inverter and have that take over for, uh, for shore power or for um, uh, generator power. Um, I think the reason why I wanted to do that was more centered around uh, being able to run the air conditioner or high, high wattage um, utilities. So turn on the inverter, it uses that, turn off the inverter, um, it just flips over back to, to, to whatever else there is if, if there is anything so I don't know that didn't come out right a 90 degree faucet connection how exciting um, I'll even show you how to install it righty loosey lefty goosey I don't know yeah, we'll get we'll get through it together uh, let's see had a one of these laying around on the spa outside just a little USB power adapter. Can't have enough of these, and we have plenty of these at home, so um, since it was just rotting away on top of the spa, figured I'd nab it, put it in the trailer. I was thinking that was a tire inner tube, but it's not, it's heat shrink. So battery cables, Always doing work on those, so I ordered some heat shrink tubing. So that'll go on the trailer. Uh, let's see. So thank goodness for eBay and thank goodness for Chinese manufacturers. So these are all in plastic bags, I'm going to leave them in there, but essentially, what is this? Looks like a meter, doesn't it? Looks like another meter. Anyone? It is a shunt. A shunt, shunt, the trailer. A shunt, shunt, the trailer, twice. So. Um, the the solar charge controller that I have provides me with the amperage and the voltage coming in. It does not provide me much else. Um, it attempts to show me the battery um, charge percentage, but it uh, it has some known issues. Um, so. What I wanted to do is be able to um, have a meter on the battery as far as power coming out of the battery or going into the battery. And one of these has like a in and an out. These are slightly different. So one of them will actually show me, actually I think it might be this one that I want to put on the battery, has the charging indicator. So basically it'll tell me if there's a a negative charge or in other words a discharge or a positive charge going into the battery so long story short just build a man or monitor um, the amount of power either going into or out of the battery so if I have a negative flow into the battery or if I have um, I'm sorry if I have a positive flow going into the battery or if I have a, uh, a negative flow going into the battery in other words I'm draining the battery um, I also wanted to put one of these on the solar panels just so I could monitor that without having to use the, um, it'll give me wattage, which I like to just be able to look up and say, oh, I'm getting, you know, 300 watts because as you're charging a battery, the voltage could be 14 volts. It could be, you know, 13, it, it can vary depending on the stage that the, uh, 
that the charge is on. Um, and so I didn't want to have to keep doing the math, you know, 14.2 times, you know, 14.2 volts times 3.6 amps, what is that in, in, in watts? I just wanted to see pure watts coming in. So um, battery drain and, uh, and solar panel um, wattage is why I have these. And they are just cheap Chinese. I'm sure they're not going to be that accurate, but if they're close, within 5 or 10 percent, I will be a happy enough camper. Red shrink tubing, because you have a positive and a negative. Uh, what else do we have here? Dielectric grease. Seems like I have a box full of lube here. I'll edit that. But So this is electrical grease. Um, a lot of the terminals on the batteries and, and other electrical connections. It's not a bad bad idea to use this, and so I've I've never used it before, but I will, um, I'll, I'll put it on my batteries and, and other high current terminals, and we'll see how that works. It's supposed to prevent oxidation, corrosion, so on and so forth, and just provide a better connection all around. Waha. So this is a faucet diffuser, I think, right? And if you look at that picture there, you can see that it has a little lever on it. And what that does, it's a flow restrictor. Let me open this up. I don't want to open like every one of these packages I have. I'll spend the next two hours putting it all back together. All right, so it's a faucet diffuser with a lever. Basically what that allows you to do is control the flow of the water coming out of it. So I forget the, uh, I forget the, nope, I totally got that wrong. This is a shutoff valve for the, for the shower. Ignore that. We'll come back to the diffuser. But that is a shutoff valve for the shower head because the new one didn't come with it. So I wish I could remember the name of that other faucet that I have. It's the one that looks like a gooseneck or an alien head. And um, pretty awesome. It injects, oh, oxygenic. There we go. It injects oxygen or air into the water stream and makes you feel like you're getting a stronger shower than you actually are. Uh, what else? Can you ever have enough of these? Problem is, you buy these, you buy like a dozen of them, you use two or three, and then a year and a half later when you need them, they're all dry. But what the heck. Okay, these are half a gallon per minute low flow dual thread kitchen and bath I guess they call them diffusers but got like a how many are in there six got six for like I don't remember what it was ten bucks or something cheap like that so put that on the bathroom faucet um, maybe on the kitchen faucet uh, and have some extras to spare seems like buying one was um, for the price I could buy for double the price, I think I could buy like all six of these or something crazy. So, so this is the one that I actually bought for the kitchen sink, and it's selectable. Basically, you can select between. If I can read that, half a gallon per minute, one gallon per minute, and 1.5 gallons per minute. So the reason why I want this on the kitchen is because. Um, if you're washing dishes, you want to use like half a gallon per hour or per minute. Half a gallon per hour would be great. Um, but you want the, the, the low flow if you're just washing your hands or rinsing off some dishes. But if you're filling up a pot to boil some spaghetti, you don't want to sit there for, you know, three minutes waiting for it to fill up. So, so that's what that's for. 
And we're running out of goodies. We got some wire. Wire? Right here. Um, that jokes. Follow along. Um, so the wire is basically for these, these displays. Um, where I want to be able to mount them. Um, it's not going to work where I want to be able to mount them. So I basically just needed some low voltage wire to run between the shunt. Another joke maybe? Nope. Um, some, I needed some low amperage wire to run between the shunt and the, um, the display. So I have plenty of it, 50 feet. That was cheap. 16 gauge should do the trick. I do not have a circuit breaker on my solar panels and I wanted to add one. So 50 amp, I've got about 400 and so watts. So do the math, 50 amps more than plenty, plus enough to expand, so. Then if you've been watching my videos, if you're one of the two people that have been watching my videos, you know that I have a little two-stroke uh, generator in addition to my four-stroke. Uh, the little two-stroke generator is like 1200 watt. Um, it's enough to power my progressive dynamics charge charger. Um, and so you have to have two-stroke oil. So there it is. So we're going to head out to the trailer. Um, drop this stuff off. I'll show you around in the trailer. I wanted to take some measurements for um, some potential remodeling that we might do in there. Um, I'll explain that when we're there so it makes sense. Uh, peace out until we get to the trailer. Enjoy. <laughs> 